What's up, fellas? Welcome back to the channel. And of course, in today's video, you know we got to be talking about some more NBA trade deadline stuff. Yesterday, if you missed it, I predicted the trade deadline. I talked about the Victor Oladipo trade. And in today's two videos, uh, we're going to be talking about the Nikola Vucevic trade first. And then later today, we'll be talking about the Aaron Gordon trade to the Denver Nuggets. So if you guys are interested in content like that, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every single day on this channel. It's the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. If you're new here, by the way, what's up? My name is Tucker. Uh, you can leave a like rating on the video if you're enjoying it as well. And you can check me out at various socials and a link tree link down in the description below. With those things said, let's talk about the Nikola Vucevic trade to the Chicago Bulls. So during the day yesterday, I was anticipating a couple of things, right? I wanted to see where Victor Oladipo was going to go. I was keeping an eye on potential Lonzo Ball and Kyle Lowry trades. Uh, Aaron Gordon was a guy that I was pretty much convinced was going to be moved. And by the time we got within a couple hours of the deadline, I was thinking, okay, we kind of know who's going to be moved. I didn't think Nikola Vucevic was going to be one of those guys. And then seemingly out of nowhere, Chicago steps up with this offer that was always going to be kind of what it took to get Nikola Vucevic away from Orlando. And here's the trade. The Bulls get Nikola Vucevic and Alfred Camino in exchange for Otto Porter, Wendell Carter Jr., and Chicago's 2021 and 2023 first round picks, both of which are top four protected. So the story around Vucevic this entire time was Orlando would be interested in moving him. I think they kind of came to the realization, whether it be over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks, that they needed to kind of reset this roster. They know they like Markel Fultz. They know they like Jonathan Isaac. Apart from that, the rest of the guys on their roster either were getting up there in age like Vucevic, or they just weren't sure how they fitted the roster like Aaron Gordon. And so they were going to make moves. They traded Fournier, they traded Gordon, who we'll talk about later today. Vucevic was the guy, though, that they weren't sure about. They didn't know if they were ready to move on from him. They knew they wanted significant value. They weren't just going to give him away. And this certainly, in my opinion, represents significant value. Let's get to the Bulls part of this first, and then we'll talk about kind of the magic side of this. So for Chicago, I do think this is a significant risk. Um, I'll grade both sides of this trade here in a little bit. Um, I understand the mindset and I understand the sentiment of bringing in someone like Nikola Vucevic. The Chicago Bulls over the last handful of years have continually added young talent and added players to this group that could be something or maybe end up becoming something or have some potential, but that has not translated to a consistent winning record. Meanwhile, Zach Levine has been really, really good over the last couple of years and been even better this season. And at a certain point, the Bulls kind of realized, hey, we need to go out and get somebody. We need to cash in on some of our assets and we need to go out and get a guy that can really, really help us right now alongside Zach Levine. And ultimately, they decided that that guy was Nikola Vucevic. Now, it cost them Otto Porter Jr. is an expiring contract, not that big of a deal. Wendell Carter Jr. and two future top four protected picks, one this year, one in 2023. Um, Wendell Carter Jr. is a guy that health has been an issue. And when he, when he came out of the draft and he came to the league, I thought he was going to be a really good player. Um, I thought that he had this like Al Horford type game to him. I still think he's got potential. I'm not sure that's an asset that Bulls fans are really all that upset about losing. Uh, but, uh, you know, I do think that he could have been something down the road. It's relatively significant, but more so the risk here for me is related to the two picks that the Bulls gave up. Now, like I said, I get it. And I think it makes sense to a certain extent for them to go out and get someone like Nikola Vucevic because I'm not sure that their roster was going to be doing much anyway, right? But anytime that you're a team like Chicago that hasn't made the playoffs in a while, that should make the playoffs now this year, but I mean, you know, you're you're one injury away from someone to someone like Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic to being right back where you were before this trade. Anytime that's the case, giving up picks like this is a concern. Now, granted, they're top four protected, so in any kind of disaster scenario, they would retain the pick. And more than likely for this season, it's going to end up somewhere in the teens and not be incredibly, incredibly valuable. And then by 2023, you would imagine hopefully Levine um, and Vucevic, you know, are still rock and roll and you're still really good. Some of the other guys on the roster develop and, you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now, there's a bit of an opportunity cost here as well with the fact that that limits their ability to trade any other picks in the future as well to get other guys. And so this is kind of their roster. Um, you know, there's still a Kobe White trade to make. They still got to figure out what they want to do with Lowry Markkinen. Um, and, you know, Patrick Williams is there. Where does he fit? Who's going to be playing on the wing? All those different things. But specifically as it relates to the Vucevic-Levine combo, I think it's a good move. I just would be a little bit nervous personally if I was a Bulls fan about giving up the future picks. But I also would be excited because finally you have, you know, another guy that really works well alongside Zach Levine on the offensive end of the floor. Defensively, 
they're going to be a disaster, at least for a little bit. Vucevic isn't completely awful. He isn't like early Nikola Jokic, completely awful defensively, but he's not great. Neither is Kobe White, neither is Zach Levine. I don't know who their wing defender is supposed to be other than Patrick Williams, and I'm not, and I'm not sure how he fits unless he's the four, and then if Markkanen's on the floor, I, I, I just, all that, I'm not sure how all that works. But ultimately, from an offensive standpoint, Vucevic is a step up. He provides them another all-star. They should absolutely be a playoff team. And I think that's kind of the goal here for Chicago. And then they can figure out the rest of the stuff later. Ultimately, their goal, they're probably thinking, we just got an all-star for Wendell Carter and expiring and two picks that are hopefully going to be like 15 or later. So ultimately, I like the move. Personally, I would grade it right around a B just because of the risk of those picks in the long term. Uh, but I, I do like the addition of Vucevic in Chicago. Now, for Orlando, I don't see how any Magic fan can really be upset about what Orlando did yesterday. Um, I, I think if you're being realistic and you're understanding that your team is just not that good, yes, it's a little bit weird that your team is going to be so bad now that like one quarter Jr. Cole Anthony and RJ Hampton are going to be taking a ton of shots, but ultimately your team needed a reset. You know, the injury issues to, to Fultz and Isaac kind of reset everything. You've been used to being kind of a semi-playoff team over the last couple of years, but ultimately kind of getting out of that medium zone of mediocrity is going to be a really positive thing for this group in the long term. I think that Wendell Carter Jr. could be a good player in Orlando. I think it also opens up the possibility that without Vucevic there necessitating playing 30 to 35 minutes a night, that allows for a little bit more Mo Bamba stuff. I'm not, it's not like Wendell Carter Jr. is going to come in there and immediately start playing 35 minutes. Um, so it kind of opens up their front court rotation a little bit in addition to, of course, dumping Gordon a little bit later in the day. Um, so if there's an opportunity for Carter Jr. to develop, I think Orlando is the place. So that's good, at least. And then these two picks, which can exist in multiple ways. You can select a player with these picks, add, you know, some nice players to the roster in addition to the other guys you traded for yesterday. Um, or you can use these picks to, to make a different move if you see a guy that you really want either in the draft to move up or, you know, a, a player out there that you'd possibly like. I mean, Orlando can go into this draft and let's just say that their own pick ends it. I don't know. Let's just say they end up with like the sixth pick or something in the lottery. And they're like, you know what? We really like the top three, the top four players in this class. They can use the 2023 Chicago pick and go up and get somebody if they really wanted to. It allows them to have that level of flexibility to where they can start to build an interesting roster. I mean, if they get a good pick, either via trade or via the lottery in this upcoming draft, then you're looking at, you know, Jonathan Isaac, Marco Foltz, whatever you think about Cole Anthony, uh, RJ Hampton, Gary Harris, guys like that, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., and then, you know, multiple other picks as well that you can kind of throw around there. I think I think from the long-term perspective, Orlando is in an infinitely better spot today than they were yesterday. And I think this trade is in A+. Plus. Like, when, when I saw the rumors about what they were hoping to get in exchange for Vucevic, I was like, okay, that's fair. They're not going to give him away for free. But I found it unlikely they were actually going to get that trade offer. And so I was like, okay, they're probably not going to trade Vucevic. Their roster is going to be really bad around him, and it's just not going to be a great look. But the fact that they were able to get a team like Chicago to step up, I don't know what the other offers were that were potentially on the table, but I would imagine that this is one where Chicago basically said, okay, fine, we're good with two firsts. Let's go ahead and give it up uh, to get Vucevic. I think this is a fantastic job done by the Magic front office throughout the day yesterday, but specifically with this trade, I think it's an absolute A+. plus. Overall, I think it's a bit of a win-win. I think there's certainly scenarios in which this works out well for both teams. Uh, but ultimately, I think that the, the, the big winner here was Orlando. Uh, Vucevic is a guy that I was advocating for them to trade before they even signed him to an extension, I believe two years ago at this point. Um, you know, right before he made, or yeah, in the season in which he was named an All-Star, I was like, trade him. You don't want to re-sign him. You don't want to sign him to a long-term deal. Get some value out of him. Ultimately, they re-signed him. And I think their plan was to try and continue to be a good team. And then once the injury stuff kind of got to the point that it did with Fultz and Isaac, they decided to, to kind of hit the reset button yesterday. I think it's absolutely the correct decision. Now it's on them to develop their young players and to make the correct decisions in the draft as well as potential trades down the road. So the job is certainly not done, but I think they are on an infinitely better path now than they were at this time yesterday. And for the Bulls, I'm excited. You know, we'll see what the Levine Vucevic thing looks like in ball screens. They're going to be a really good offensive team. I, I just hope that they can find a way to figure some things out defensively um, and that they can figure out a way to get the Kobe White, Zach Levine backcourt to work. Um, you know, they've got other pieces on the roster, guys like Thaddeus Young, that can be good for them. Um, and it just kind of depends on the fit. I know that Levine and Vucevic in a ball screen are going to work. That's going to fit. They have another all-star. The other pieces I question a little bit. And then obviously giving up the future picks is a little bit nerve wracking. So that's the only reason this trade isn't graded a little bit higher. 
for me personally. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys personally would have graded these trades. I'm always interested to see what you guys have to say, uh, you know, if your opinion happens to be different than mine. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of the first video of the day. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be talking about the Aaron Gordon trade to Denver a little bit later. So if you're a Magic fan, lots of content for you today if you're just a fan of trades in general. And then moving forward past today, we'll cover some more trade deadline stuff, but these as well as the Oladipo trade are the, are the big ones I kind of wanted to cover in the first uh, day to day and a half past the trade deadline. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you can leave a like rating. You can check out more videos for me. The box is on screen. Check out various socials for me and a link tree link in the description below as well if you wanna hang out with me outside of these videos. And yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all next time.